I've heard it multiple times. The many say the only correct way to enjoy an evening in Venice is hiring a gondola, appreciating the views of the city of canals, while the gondolier is singing "O Sole Mio." Well, that only works if you're rich. For the rest of us, the 99%, there gotta be another way that our Venice nights don't end up in misery, because us, the less fortunate. Can't afford a few hundred euros an hour for a boat ride in the dark. This only correct way also insults some local Venetians. Yes, that rare group of folks many tourists claim that they never saw when they were in a city. Look, not every fun-loving Venetian hops onto a gondola and sings to end their nights every day, okay? Plus, oh my gosh, "O Sole Mio" is a song from Napoli. All right, cut the music. At least for fuck's sake, we should play some music from Venice before we call out someone else. Well, let's start with some real Venetian music, shall we? In the previous episode, we did a detailed tour of Basilica di San Marco. Venice's most iconic church building, where the glory and the dark past of the 1,000-year-old Venetian Republic come across. Our Venice adventure continues as we escape the city's late afternoon tourist crowd to a neighborhood just east of the San Marco area. Once past the iconic Bridge of Sighs, where we will take a closer look when we explore Palazzo Ducale, you notice a significant drop of tourists. And all of a sudden, you felt like you're in a different city. However, it doesn't mean that the Castello neighborhood has nothing to see. It is home to the Venetian Arsenal, one of the oldest of its kind in the world, and the place where the mighty Venetian navy was headquartered at. Today, the Arsenal is still a naval complex, with a section of it dedicated to special exhibitions that Venetians and tourists alike can check out. The exhibition hall seemed to be closed by the time I reached the complex. I guess it's okay, because that means there will be less people, so I could see more of this place without the crowd. Despite of unable to visit the actual arsenal, there is a church right next to it that's open to all. Why don't we go in and take a look? Unlike San Marco, Castello is a full-on residential area where many local Venetians live. I could feel more energy of an authentic Venetian neighborhood than the area around my hotel. This would be a great place to see how life in Venice is really like. Here you get to see not only where the Venetians live, but also where they shop, parks where they relax, places where they socialize. And the best of all, no tourist crowd. Thank、you
I could tell that there was going to be a rainfall coming down soon. Conveniently, it was also around dinner time. I found a small restaurant in the Castello neighborhood and had some very good bistecca for dinner. Again, many say that they never get to meet local Venetians during their trip to Venice. Guess what? We all said salute to a local 80-year-old signore whose family organized a birthday meal at this restaurant that evening. All right, folks, that was really good timing. I just finished dinner, and apparently there was a, a thunder shower that just passed by, which I'm not sure how the folks who hang their laundry up there are trying to dry uh, feel like. But anyways, now the rain has stopped, and uh, it's around 8 p.m., and well, that means it's the magic time here in Venice. Hint, hint, the magic time has something to do with the Vaporetti. I realized that from that time of the day, if I were to take the Vaporetti, Venice's public transit on boats. My three-day Vaporetto pass would then expire after I leave Venice already on the third day. Plus, I was too lazy to walk back to my hotel. It was so easy to get lost in Venice and I was already exhausted at that point. Venice during the sunset hours especially after rain, was mesmerizing. Hey, who said you must have a gondola in order to have a fantastic sunset experience in Venice? There were plenty of people, many were tourists, just taking the Vaporetto for a joy ride rather than for going to places. I decided to join them and see Venice from perspective I have yet to see so far during my trip. I took Vaporetto number one, the route that goes through Iocano Grande, the Grand Canal. This S-shaped, four kilometers long canal is the main bloodline of this world-famous floating city. You find many of Venice's greatest architectures along the Grand Canal, including a church by the name of uh, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Just kidding, because it was still only the first day of my time in Venice. This evening's Vaporetto ride will serve as a preview of where to check out in the next few days when the sun is out and bright. For now, let's just enjoy the ride and the same view that I did not pay 160 euros an hour for. Many houses along the Grand Canal once belonged to wealthy Venetian merchants. Some of the facades are so impressive, even by today's standards. The majority of them were no longer housing rich families, 
Her hotels and art galleries, where tourists from all over the world can stay and visit. At one point, the Vapoleto reached the most famous bridge in Venice, Ponte di Liato, the Rialto Bridge. It was the very first bridge in Venice that connected the two sides of the Grand Canal. Today, Ponte di Liato is a symbol of Venice, and its strategic location also marks roughly the halfway of the Grand Canal's entire length. Just as we reached this magnificent bridge, I had a feeling that another rainfall, very likely a thunder shower, was coming soon. I got off the Vapoletto and went straight back to my hotel because, oh well, I didn't have my umbrella with me 
at that time. What about the rest of the Grand Canal Night Vapoletto ride? No worries, because the next evening, I came back. Except I started from the other way around, from the Vapoletti Terminal near the Santa Lucia train station. It was very late. As you could see in the footages when I took the Vapoletto ride from the Santa Lucia train station. 
despite the ride being way darker than the previous days. It was also way quieter, and I didn't have to worry about rain. Anyways, there is no wrong way or wrong time for cruising through the Grand Canal when Venice quiets down. The experience was truly one of the highlights, and I highly recommend you doing it if you feel like hiring a gondola might not be the best option for you to enjoy the serenity of La Serenissima. For now, let's just take it away and find out what else in Venice is waiting for us to see in the next episode. <laughs>